<laughs> After all this discussion about chemical cleaning of this engine cases on the outside, it came down to bead blasting after all. You know, why would you want to bead blast an engine? Uh, well, we're down here in Florida. It's real humid. Uh, up until a few, very few years ago, we had a phosphate chemical plant nearby. We were, we were about a mile and a half at the most from the salt water. And you could smell ammonia down here, extremely strong at times. That's all gone. And, it, and everybody down here talks about corrosion on their engine. After nine years of this, it's time to do it anyways. Well, glass beads is just one of the medias used for cleaning or prepping uh, metal for some further application, whether it's topical, plating, painting, whatever it happens to be. And uh, all the manufacturers um, supply various you know, it could be garnet, could be the walnut shells, or whatever it happens to be. And if you call them for information and say that I'm going to be uh, prepping such and such, no information given. I tried a different uh, uh, sandblast or bead blast head. This is one out of my cabinet at the shop. Um, the orifice size for the air is a little bit larger, so and it's got a ceramic tip in it. It's not worn out like the other one, but I can tell the difference because uh, l look at I. <laughs> I'm bead blasting my arm, just holding it over, just to save some of the beads. <laughs> that'll that'll work, but I think I may have to put the gauntlet gloves on for that one. <laughs> and the consumption's back up, but it does clean the uh, the dark spots out of there for sure. So sacrifice one or the other. I'm going to use small beads and take forever, or little larger beads with a high high volume uh, nozzle. That's all there is to it. <laughs> In the days when I first started buying glass beads, probably 25 years ago. Um, there's actually in the machinery handbook a list of glass beads from 1 to 13. And uh, so I've been using about a mid-grade number 7, except for some very meticulous little dies for stamping uh, coins and stuff, where we had to go to a 13, which is super fine for cleaning before plating. And uh, so I start calling around and asking for number 7 beads from manufacturers, and nobody knows. So now they got ABC, which is basically three grits, and uh, A is fine, C is a more coarse, they may have more than that. And so I was questioning, I didn't know which way the uh, lettering went. So I'm questioning, oh, and this lady on the other end in Cleveland uh, says, well, sieve size. Well, if it sieves, yeah, I know what sieves are <laughs> for classification of rock and various other things. And uh, she says, well, the smaller number means finer. Exactly the opposite. It, uh, sieve size has to go with how many uh, actual holes per square inch. And that goes from like two to four hundred or bu or better, twelve hundred even. If you buy some twelve hundred bit grit sandpaper for polishing something, yeah. And uh, so, anyways, the people you get on the other end these days, no information. So again, back to uh, how are you going to use it? Like like today, I thought these beads were a little bit on the large side, but I used a different nozzle with a different orifice size. Pretty good. Of course, your consumption goes up, but it 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 actually got to where I wanted to go. And we're trying to save some here, by the way. Just a jury rig tarp with a bucket under the bottom to catch it, and maybe I'm catching 20, 30 percent of recovery on the beads. Um, I'm going to end up using probably a total of about 200 pounds of beads to actually blast this. They won't be all gone, but I have a bead blast cabinet over here. I can throw them in there and use them again. Right now it looks like there is absolutely no progress going on. <laughs> but there is a plan. Actually, there is. And uh, we're coming up on my plan, too, because sun and fun I didn't expect to be done. Alex and I would like to do a little filming uh, before the rain weather comes in, which is going to be, if, if it is normal, um, somewhere around end of June. Then we can start having these uh, storm cells, which are not uh, conducive to flying <laughs> with the ultralight sometimes, <laughs> as we experienced about three years ago. <laughs> It was okay, but it was, uh, it was a test. I realize what we've been showing here today is extreme for most people to do this. I'm not going to recommend it for any hobbyist that just wants to try it. it. It's a few years of experience of what beads will do. Cannot have anything inside that engine for sure. Uh, a friend of mine about 20 years ago, uh, English engineer, has a Fairchild 24, and he had the entire cases pulled apart, remanned the entire engine, had the cases bead blast separated, and bead blast internally. He assumed they were washed. We did a ground test on it, did all the normal work, went up to fly it. It lasted about 40 seconds in the air. 
because the being a radial engine, it had uh, one main bearing with uh, uh, silver plated uh, cage and stuff, and the beads, it just tore it apart. It managed it on the ground, but when we went in the air, it came apart. And that's another reason I would not uh, take an engine apart and do this, but you make sure it's sealed, and when I get done, we're going to wash it with, uh, you know, some kind of light detergent and wash it and wash it and wash it. Hopefully no shading. <laughs> okay.